Thor Love and Thunder is the 29th MCU movie following up Ragnarok and once again directed by Taika Waititi. Thor is up against a new villain in Gore the God Butcher. Set on killing all the gods of the universe, Thor teams up with Korg, Valkyrie, and a mysteriously new empowered Jane Foster aka Mighty Thor to stop Gore and all of his massacre. Now you guys know that I have been highly anticipating this movie ever since it was announced back at Comic Con in like 2019. I'm a big fan of Thor Ragnarok and what Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth were able to do with that movie, infusing the Thor character with a little bit more of a light-hearted humorous spirit, but also allowing him to maintain the seriousness that he brings in scenarios and situations that it requires. The way that they found the balance within that character I thought was really well done in Ragnarok. And that does carry over into Thor Love and Thunder. Hemsworth is once again really great at balancing the two sides of Thor, being the humorous, goofy Thor when he's with his friends, when he's with the ones that he knows. But when it comes to the villains, when it comes to the dangerous scenarios, Thor knows when to put on the serious face, the serious tone. And for me, it really helps to make the character not come across as just a complete goofball. But when he has to be a goofball, Chris Hemsworth does it well. And although the balance is still there, they definitely lean heavier into one over the other. Because Thor Love and Thunder is a through and through comedy, even more than Ragnarok was. The story this time around, while it's a decent story, is not the focus of Taika Waititi this time around. He is all about the jokes. Any chance that this movie has of getting serious with the story or telling a joke, they go for the joke every time. And to Taika Waititi's credit, I did find this movie quite funny. I had numerous laugh out loud moments from beginning to end throughout the entire runtime of Thor Love and Thunder. But the expense of that is that some really intriguing and interesting elements of the movie are sacrificed. Natalie Portman coming back as Jane Foster is a very welcomed return. Not only is this the best she's been in the franchise, but she actually gets in on the action this time around. She obviously worked out really hard preparing for this role and it definitely paid off. I also thought that her and Hemsworth were great this time around. I've always liked Thor and Jane in the Thor movies, but this is definitely the most chemistry that they've ever had. The actors just seem to come across a lot more relaxed and comfortable with each other. And when it comes to Jane as Mighty Thor, Natalie Portman really pulls it off. She's very believable as the new Mighty Thor. I found that the storyline of her becoming Mighty Thor and the consequences that it has on the health of her body was a really interesting storyline, but Taika Waititi never really goes that deep with it. It's kept very surface level and it feels very rushed. And for me, that was disappointing because the storyline was actually really tragic and really intriguing, and the movie just kind of left me longing for more out of it. Speaking of which, let's go on to Christian Bale coming in as this villain's Gore the God Butcher. Gore the God Butcher has a very similar problem to Mighty Thor for me. The personal journey of revenge that Gore is on against the gods of the universe because he feels that they have abandoned him is a great and interesting storyline, and it's also when the movie gets the most serious. And of course, because the silliness and the humor is taking priority and forefront of this movie and Taika Waititi's vision, Gore's storyline also feels really rushed and pushed to the background. Christian Bale is obviously having a blast playing Gore the God Butcher, and he is very creepy, he's very unsettling, and he gives a very eerie vibe and presence whenever he's on screen. But unfortunately, that's not very much. I was actually really surprised how little screen time Christian Bale gets as Gore the God Butcher in this movie. Don't get me wrong, he's definitely in the movie, and he has some great scenes, but when you get an A-list actor like Christian Bale coming back to the comic book genre to play the villain in a Thor movie... I thought he'd have a little bit more to do. Another character with very little screen time was Valkyrie, and I was actually really surprised by this. Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson feels like the most contractually obligated character to be here. It's not that she's bad, Tessa Thompson is still good as Valkyrie, and she gets some really good scenes, but she doesn't really do much in the story. She gets a couple moments to shine, and I like the developing friendship that she had going with Jane, but she really does feel like the third wheel along on this journey with Thor and Mighty Thor. So as a Valkyrie fan, you may find yourself a little bit disappointed with that aspect of the movie. One thing that this does have over Ragnarok though, is this movie is full of color. This movie is so vibrant, the colors really pop. For the most part, it's a very beautiful movie to look at, but I did find that some of the visual effects didn't work for me this time around. There are a lot of scenes that look like the actors are standing in front of a poor green screen. The background's all blurry, kind of out of focus, and it really makes it stand out. 
Now this is the first MCU movie that's using the volume technology that's heavily used for The Mandalorian and other Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. So I don't know if ditching the green screen and going for the volume technology was a detriment to the effects in this movie because just coming off of, for example, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, which did stick to green screen, there's a lot of sequences in that movie that are full green screen that you wouldn't suspect are full green screen. But when you look at Thor Love and Thunder, there are definitely moments in this movie where you go, yeah, that's, that's a green screen. So I don't know, maybe the volume just works better for television as opposed to the big screen, but it definitely did stick out to me as having some really questionable effects, especially for a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Now it does sound like I'm being pretty negative on Thor 11 and Thunder, and I don't want to be, but these are things that stuck out to me. Every positive that this movie has almost has a negative, and that is because it is so funny. Everything is kept pretty lighthearted. It's kept from getting too serious. And Taika Waititi does take some shortcuts and there is some lazy writing in this movie to get information across to our characters and therefore the audience. That when you compare the writing to other movies that Taika Waititi has done, it was kind of disappointing that he took these shortcuts. And while these things stuck out to me and I can't ignore them, I still had a pretty good time with Thor Love and Thunder because it is a comedy. And while you're watching the movie, it becomes very clear that that was Taika's view of this movie. He's viewing this as a superhero action comedy. And that's exactly how you gotta go into watching Thor 11 Thunder. This is not a deep movie. It does have moments of characters exploring things about themselves, and characters do have arcs, but they're very surface level. And if you're looking for a Thor movie where Thor goes on a very serious self-discovery journey, and it's a greater, grander story within the MCU, I don't think you're going to find that in Thor 11 Thunder, and you're going to come out pretty disappointed with the movie. But if you go in with the mindset of this being just a comedy, I think you can have a really good time with Thor 11 Thunder, like I did. And that's exactly how I'm reviewing this movie. I'm reviewing this movie as a comedy, and as a comedy, I can give Thor 11 Thunder a solid recommend. I had a pretty good time. I was laughing throughout. The performances are a lot of fun. It's not as good as Thor Ragnarok, but it's also a different movie from Thor Ragnarok, and I don't think the two are comparable. But anyway, guys, those are all my thoughts and opinions on Thor 11 Thunder. Yeah, there's some mixed stuff in there, but overall, I liked the movie. What did you guys think of Thor 11 Thunder? Have you seen it yet? Comment down below. Let me know. I want to know all your thoughts and opinions about this movie. And guys, if you haven't already, go on and click that subscribe button. Click that like button. Click that notification bell. All that YouTube stuff. And thank you guys so much for watching and joining me for this review. And I hope to talk to you guys again real soon.